Hey, hello family. I know you're watching this video live right now. I just want to give you an introduction before we start our, our, our part. Quiero darte una introducción antes que empecemos esto. So if you're watching this, there's something in the Bible I love it. And it's about the law of expectation. And every time you expect something, you put a demand in whoever's going to be preaching, whoever's going to be speaking. I want you to close your eyes and start praying that God will speak to you today. That God will answer your petitions. That God will answer the desire of your heart. So if you're watching this, get get ready because it's about to start. It is about to happen. God is with you. So let's rejoice and let's have fun and let's bring this energy up because you are going to be blessed today. God bless you.
Welcome to Family Faith Community Church this morning online. We are so grateful that you are here this morning. And we just want to have you guys just come and join us in your living rooms, um, in your cars if you're driving. Be sure to watch that road. We just are so grateful that you have chosen to just join us at the table this morning. And we just want you to like, share, and even subscribe on our YouTube channel if you want to continue to join us every week. And honestly, there are Bible studies throughout all the week on Facebook. Um, please be sure to just get that notification, hit that notification button so you can actually see what's coming up next with Family of Faith because we want you to be a part. Yes. We love to hear what God is doing in and through you in the comments below. If you have prayer requests, we have prayer warriors ready and able right. to pray over you and just release the peace, the love, and the joy of the Father that even now I know that you're feeling. And so just join us this morning, whether you're standing up, whether you're kneeling, whether you're laying down, we just want you to receive and join in with us in the gift of worshiping God together all across the world and even Ohio, right? Woo, here we go.
introduce you uh, to our service and we have some announcements to make let me put my glasses hello my name is Joel Canamar just want to make some announcements we're gonna be having a parking lot service and there will be more information to come and to let you know what how we're gonna do it we also have, don't forget, that Monday through Saturday, we have a devotion service uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning. So join us, that's on Facebook. Uh, Wednesday, Wednesday night, uh, Bible study, p.m., 7 p.m. And then Tuesday, our uh, church, the pastors from our church, they're going to join together at 7 p.m. Um, with... Our Life Vineyard Church. They will be gathering, to get, gathering together, visually, visually and willing, willing be, and they will be uh, praying together uh, on our main page. So we wanna, we wanna welcome you that this, uh, th these events are coming, and they will be in uh, our line and the, in our page or uh, YouTube also, right? Well, thank you very much for being here, and we and we we praise that you will enjoy the service. And at this time, we'll welcome our pastor, Josue Santiago. Thank you, Josue. Hallelujah! You guys excited tonight? Oh, not tonight. This morning, are you guys really excited? Come on, make some noise! Uh, but before I preach, I just want to. I, this is a, a time uh, that we have, uh, and it's part of uh, it's part of worship. Is when we bring our tithes and offerings. So we're gonna just do a video, quick video right now, and we will be back in a second. Okay, God bless you. Hey, hello, family. This is Pastor Josue. I'm really excited because this is an amazing time and season to be alive. Somebody said to me years ago that this is the church. For you to have a church, they said to me, you have to have a building and a platform and music and everything. But we are learning right now that a church looks like a living room. Looks like mama and papa and kids coming together. Looks like coffee. It looks like a family doing life. With this thought, people are thinking, okay, because we can't go to church or the building, the church has stopped. We are not doing anything as a church, but that's a lie. Right now we are advancing as a church. We are serving more our community like never before. We are seeing more people coming through our food pantry like never before. We are investing in our community like never before. We are advancing as the kingdom of God in our community. So don't think that we are stopping as a church. Don't think because we don't have service on Sunday morning, we do it online, we are stopping. No. This is the perfect time for you to do something important. If you're watching this video, it's because you're about to give your tithes and offerings. I don't want you to give from your locking. 
I don't want you to give because you have to do it. I want you to give because are you thinking and you know that you're investing in the kingdom and you're investing in family of faith. And there's a difference between spending and investing. And it's the return. I want to bless you right now. I want to advise you and give you my heart and, and put my heart right here and say, this is the perfect time for you to give. It's the perfect time for you to give and to advance the kingdom. God bless you. I love you. And remember, the best is yet to come. Hey family, we are back right now. As you can see, we are really fast. We put this right here in a couple seconds, so you will enjoy this morning. But before I preach, I want to just do this song again. If you can just stand up in your house, get your coffee, get your kids right now, and just stand up for a second, and let's just sing. Come on, Rachel. Oh, Come on, say it. Father, we take over the atmosphere of our city right now. We take over the atmosphere of Newark, Ohio. We take over the atmosphere of America. And we speak shalom of God. Shalom of God on your house. Shalom 
of God in your business, the shalom of God in your country. If you're watching from Cuba, from Sri Lanka right now, this morning we declare from Ohio, shalom of God right now. Oh, Jesus, there is... Come on, come on, say it, say it. There is... Hallelujah, hallelujah. There is nothing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know what I, I really like about God? Like, I, I should say, I, I was born in a place that witchcraft is a, the main religion. And, and when you, you were born in that type of uh, environment, you learn about witchcraft. And I remember one time I, I was just asking one of my friends, say he was a part of the a, a Santeria, that's the, the witchcraft in Cuba, the name. And he said, we worship our, our Lord because we want Him to do something. We worship Him because of that. We worship this, this, uh, this idol because of this, because of that, because He can give us this. He can, if we worship this way, then He will respond to us this way. And that made me think, why, why do I worship God? What's the main reason of why, why do I worship my Lord and Savior? And sometimes I, I was just, at that time I thought, I, I just start thinking about that. And I said, I, sometimes I worship you because of what, what you can do. I'm seeking your hands. And that's, that's fine. He, he said, if you ask, I will give you. But let me tell you why we worship Jesus. We don't worship Jesus because he will give us something. We don't worship Jesus not even for what he did at the cross. We don't worship Jesus for what he will do in your life. We worship Jesus because he deserves the glory, the honor. He is worthy of it all. That's the point. That's it. We worship him because he deserves it. He is the only one who can. Come on, Rachel. Can we do that part of that again? You turn. I don't know the song. Okay. Woo. You turn grace into God in me. Hallelujah. Come on, say it. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the having fun with their family but they're here serving us so if you know them please say hello give them something give them a you know what if you know Joel Canyamar he was the one who did he's Mexican he loves spicy things so you better give some some jalapenos to him I'm just kidding but God bless you are you excited come on are you excited I'm really excited thank you thank you guys I really appreciate you um, you know this morning I was uh, not this morning, Thursday night, I was praying uh, Thursday afternoon, and I asked God, uh, what, t give me something that it's not an old word that I can give to everybody. Give me a something, because right now if you see every preacher and if you see our church, we're all talking about the coronavirus and how can we uh, go through the situation. 
We teach you how to uh, encourage, we're encouraging you, and we are just telling you, can, you're going to go through this, you're going to go through that. And God said to me, I want you to stop encouraging people, and I want you to start empowering people. I don't know if you hear what I'm saying. He said, I don't want, I don't want, I want you to stop encouraging them and I bring in, okay, you guys can do it. I want you to start empowering them. And today we're going we're gonna to be talking about how, what are those tools we need not to pass through the storm, but to overcome whatever is coming and whatever we have right now. So right now, I'm not telling you, you're going to pass through it and everything will be fine. I'm going to give you a couple tools to this morning for you to stand up and say, enemy, shut up, shut up. And we're gonna, we're gonna, this is going to be sound, this is going to sound different tonight, this morning. Let me tell you this before we, we keep going here. Oh, whoo, I love it. Uh, uh, Tuesday night, like Joel said, I, I love Pastor Steve and Pastor Wade from Alive Vineyard. They are friends, they are family. I got to be part of their life. Uh, their parking lot service last, uh, last week, I think, and I, I, I was there, and I brought my guitar. It was freezing, but it was amazing to be with them, and they are friends, and they are family to us. So this Tuesday night at 7 p.m., we're going to be doing a live streaming with Pastor Wade and Pastor uh, Steve Osborne from uh, Live Vineyard, and we're going to go through prophetic words. We're going to pray together, but every Tuesday, I'm going to try to bring a pastor from our community to pray together. This is a time of unity in the, in the, in the family of Christ in Newark, Ohio, and in the nations. Are you ready? Come on. Let me hear you. Are you ready? Okay, the Romans chapter 8, verse 37 and I love this scripture, and it says, yet in all these things you, we are more than, I love that conquerors, through him who loves us. Okay, you know what, if, if you think that there is something in life that will come from free and that was that, you're probably, you're, you're, you're very naive. In every single area in our life, there is always a fight, Nothing will come to you, and you never will take the promised land in your life without fighting. There are so many people that have said, they said to me, okay, uh, he promised me that I will be a great pastor, I will have a great congregation, and I'm just sitting in my house waiting for God to do something. It'll, it will never work like that. Every promised land is already occupied by giants. Every promised land have a giant, and it, that giant, it is not waiting for you to give you the keys of the promised land. It's waiting for you to come and fight him. If you think you're going to go through the coronavirus in your house in quarantine, this quarantine, it is amazing. We can be with family. Some of us are scared. Some of us are victorious. Some of us are, are thriving. Some of us are striving. Some of us are ready to go away and have people like me. Some of us are really enjoying the time of season. But this quarantine is not just for you to develop a patient. It's for you to find tools and weapons you can use to fight what you should be fighting in this season. Every season in your life has a fight. There is always something to fight for. Hallelujah. I, I, lo I love this here, but I'm going to use Matthew chapter 6. And you know this scripture. It says, our Father in heaven. I mean, bless your name. Padre que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Are you, I know we have the scripture in Spanish and English here. Give us, a day, uh, give, give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our, uh, those who, who um, I don't know, I have my, I didn't write that right here. Okay, yeah, I don't see the, the shrimp right here. But and he said in the, in the last scripture, the last part is verse 13, said, for, you, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. That's, a, that's the way they, they end that scripture. For yours is the kingdom, porque tuyo es el reino, el poder, y la gloria por todos los siglos. Amen. So if you go back, it says, Father, our Father, starts with the declaration that he's not just our Lord, but he's our Father. And he give, he say, the Bible says, our Father... That is in heaven. He gave us an identity and he gave us a location for our Father. Our Father is in heaven. We worship your name. El saltado sea tu nombre. And, and the, the opera says, come, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
It is talking in that part as, uh, about a legality of a, in a spiritual world in, in, in earth. He's saying, I know you are our father. I know your kingdom is in heaven, but okay, let your kingdom come and let everything that's going on in your kingdom be done on earth as it is in heaven. So our job in our lives, in our business, in everything we do is to make sure that whatever we are and whatever we do looks like heaven. So if I'm, a, if I'm a father, I want to be a father that looks like heaven, a father in heaven. If I'm doing a business, I want that business to look like heaven. If I do everything, I want everything to look like heaven because that's our, our command. Make things in earth looks, look like heaven. By saying this, the Bible says, he, yours is the kingdom. The kingdom is the government of heaven. The power is the ability to enforce the law. If we can, if we can find a, no more, a name right here or in something, it will be the police. That they are here to enforce the Lord to, uh, law, to make sure that everybody obeys the law. And yours is the glory. Glory is the atmosphere of heaven. So, you know, you cannot separate these three things. You cannot have power with, with glory. You can have glory without kingdom. And we, you know, there are so many people that I, that I say, ah, we have the kingdom of God, and, 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 and this is a church of a good word. But if you don't have, if you all just have a good word and you don't have the manifestation of power, there is, a, there is something incomplete in that thing. You won't be able to have a kingdom established in your place if you don't have the atmosphere of glory and if you don't have signs, miracles, and wonders. And probably you, are, you don't get what I'm saying right now, but you were made to be part of the supernatural world. You shouldn't, we shouldn't be living our lives separated. We shouldn't be expecting for God to heal someone. We should be, for, not forcing, we should be walking in the supernatural power of God that he will heal, he will restore, he will heal everybody we touch. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. I love this part because uh, kingdom means, kingdom is the government of God. It is a government of God among men. Let me ask you a question. For, for those of us that feel and, and we say, okay, we do have the kingdom, and the kingdom is within me. And I know the kingdom is within, is within you. It's right here. The Bible says the kingdom is ahead. But what about the power, and what about the other part that says the glory? In this time and season that we are right now, we have been surrounded by fear. And fear is, is overtaking the atmosphere of this world. What we need to do is to establish the atmosphere of glory of God that we overtake our cities, that we overtake our churches, that we overtake our communities. And fear, it is a type of worship to the enemy. I don't know if you, if you get what I'm saying. I'm trying, I'm, let me try to, to say it in Spanglish. Hallelujah. Huh? You know what? I, as I say, I'm, I'm a, now I'm, I'm, a, I'm blessed because I, I have three citizenship. And you probably said, tell me. I mean, I, I'm Cuban. I, I was born in Cuba. I came here five years ago. But I'm still a Cuban citizen. Now I'm an American citizen. That I, I, last year it was amazing. It was a, a, a huge privilege to be an American citizen. I love this country and honor this country. That they open up their, heart, their arms and their heart for our family. We are free and we are here because of this country. I love America. And now I'm, I, and, now, and, and since I was 12 years old, I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God. So I have three citizenship, but as an American citizen, when I was doing my test to become an American citizen, I have to study a lot. I'm more than 100 questions and I have to go through a test. So as American citizens, let me tell you, we have rights and responsibilities. And one of the rights we have is freedom of express yourself, freedom of speech, uh, freedom of worship as you wish. Uh, uh, um, um, you have a, the, the freedom to vote in an in, in, in election or apply for a, for a federal employment or a position. You, you have the freedom to pursue liberty, happiness, and, 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 and everything. You have, the, you have the right to vote. You have the right to buy a house. You have the right, a lot of rights you have here in America. But also we have the responsibilities. We have the responsibility to support, the defend, and, and the support and defend the Constitution. We have to, you have a responsibility to stay informed of the issues affecting our country. We have to participate. We should participate in our, in our democracy process. 
we respect and obey the law. And, and you can, you know, I can just go ahead and, and apply all that stuff. So there is rights and responsibilities that we both need to go ahead and say, okay, I have the rights. When you're just asking for the rights and you don't apply your responsibilities, the law has a wrong balance right here. There are so many people asking for the rights or for the right to apply, and I, it, it, that's, that's, that's just that should be. You should be given this, you should be given that, but you cannot ask for your rights if you don't do your responsibilities. Does that make sense? If I'm not a good citizen, uh, that's my responsibility to co- obey the Constitution. But if I'm going to go to jail, if I kill someone or if I do something or close the church or do whatever I do, I'm, the, my responsibilities are not in alignment with my rights. So what about in the kingdom of heaven? If we are citizens of the kingdom of heaven, we should have responsibilities and rights. And let me tell you this, in, in the, the kingdom of heaven, it is a supernatural world that works with it is a mystery. And if, I, if, I, if you think about this, I mean, in this earth, for you to, to be big and be higher and be, uh, have authority, you probably have to be smart, intelligent. You have, probably have to go to school and things like that. In the kingdom of heaven, for you to be the higher one, the big one, the top dog, you have to serve the most. In the kingdom of heaven, is everything is upside down to our reality right now. In the kingdom of heaven, that's why it's hard for us to go into the kingdom of heaven and still bring in the laws, the rights, and responsibility of the old kingdom. And there are some of us that we are in a new kingdom and we are operating illegally in our own kingdom. Does that make sense? So tonight, to this morning, I'm sorry, I'm going to be talking about this. Woo-hoo. There's in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. There is a law that I want to talk to you, the law in this kingdom. And I'm going to just land here for a couple seconds. The last one is the one that I really feel impacted and, and is touching my heart. The first one is the law of recipro- reciprocity. Reciprocity. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Reciprocidad in Spanish. Luke chapter 6 verse 38. says, give and it will be given to you. You will have more than enough. So this is the law of... If you give, you will receive. But it's completely upside down to the laws we have right now. If you want to have, what do you have to do? Save. Put your money in the bank. There are so many people because of this season, this time, and they're in quarantine. And some of you, they say, I don't know if I should tie. I don't know if I should give my offerings. I don't even know if I should keep helping. There are some of you that you were helping before this whole crisis came. You were like going to Walmart or McDonald's and you say, I'm going to buy pay for, for the one behind me. And it was a culture for you to bless someone. And because a season of, uh, of the coronavirus came to you, you stopped doing it. Let me tell you this, the kingdom laws doesn't care about coronavirus. The laws of the kingdom doesn't care about your reality right now. There are principles in heaven that you don't even have to pray for. There are so many people who say, I need to pray for God to, to give me more finances. I need, no, 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 no. The Bible said that you don't need to pray for the finances. The Bible says, as you give, you will receive. As you bless your neighbors, as you bless your brother, if you have two uh, apples, give one to the other one that doesn't have. If you have two coats, give one to the other one. So you don't need to pray for prosperity. You don't need to pray for money. You just need to apply the laws of the kingdom. There are so many things in our life that we are praying for and we shouldn't be praying for because it's already by law. Does that make sense? By law, I have the ability and the right to vote. And I did for the first time last, a couple weeks ago, for the first time in my life, I vote. It felt good. It felt really good. Lana and I were just like excited. We're going to vote. So I have the right to do it. So if I have the right to receive blessing from heaven, what do I have to pray for? Something that I already have the right to do it. I just need to go and say, what is the law of heaven saying about this? And if he says that for me to have more, I have to give more, that's law. There is another law that I really like. Ooh, I really like about, um, um, and it's, it's in this one here, it says, seek the kingdom first and his righteousness and everything will be added to you. I don't have the scripture for that, but it is amazing. It is amazing 
how the Bible says that if you seek the kingdom of God first, if the only thing you, you breathe and you smell and you see is the kingdom of God, if your daily, uh, your late daily desire is to, hum, is to look more, is, 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 is abrir el corazón de Dios y recibir más, if that's your daily desire, seek the kingdom first and every single thing will be added to you. Today will be the, the beginning of a series I'm going to be doing about the keys of the kingdom. And this is nothing for me to encourage you. I just want to empower you so you know what's coming. If in the season of lacking, you stop giving or you stop blessing someone, it is it, the love of the kingdom doesn't, it doesn't care about what, the, what, what we're going through right now. There's a different, another law that I want to use right now, and I love this here. And I'm going to use here. In Revelation chapter uh, 3... Verse 7 and 8 said, uh, write this to the angel of the church in the city of Philadelphia. Ooh, uh, he, who hold, uh, who, he who's holy and true, who holds the, da- the key of David. I love that part. Who opens and, and, who opens and no man can shut. Who shuts and no man can open. He says, okay, I verse, um, okay, let me go to Isaiah chapter 22, verse 22. I will place on his shoulders the key of the house of David. What he, what he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. There is a mystery in, in heaven that I want to talk to you this morning. That when I discover this, it, it saved a lot of time for my life. Sometimes we feel, we feel this. Okay, the, uh, and this is the law of access. When Jesus died, the first thing he did was to uh, he, uh, the veil turn out so you can have total access to your Father, total access to heaven. But saying that, what are we praying? Why would, do we pray for something that we have access? Why are sometimes we 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 make things? I, I think sometimes the Christians make things harder than that it, it, it should be. I think the only problem is that we are right in front of the door, crying out for more. Papa, open the door, open the door, open the door, open the door, open the door. When we, we, we don't know, we are waiting for someone to open the door. And we need to know that behind that door there is no one because there is total access for you. You are waiting for someone to open the door and God is waiting for you to have the keys of the kingdom and say, okay, you, I already gave you the keys of the kingdom. Open up. Open the door. Open the door. You don't have to wait for somebody to open that for you. Okay, this is something that I really like. Ooh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Some of you are right now waiting, and, and you feel, I, I felt depression a couple days ago. Thursday, I was praying. And I'm going to open my heart, my heart with you. I told, to my, I, I told my wife, I need to go down to my basement. I need to just to go ahead and pray. I feel depression is knocking at my door. And I, I want to confess to you that I've never in whole, my whole life I've never been depressed. I've been always like very energetic and ah, passionate about things. And I, but today for the first time, I felt depression knocking at my, my door. Asking me to start into my, in my life, coming into my life. And I said to my wife, I need to go down to my basement. I'm going to go ahead and pray. And I shut my door, to turn off my, my, everything was off, and I, did, I just want to be in the dark. I didn't want any light. I felt like a headache was coming to my head and everything. And I was just feeling depressed. And I want to confess that to you. I was just thinking, where are the people? I don't feel their hands touching. I don't feel the, the heat of, of, of the, the fellowship. And if you know me, I'm a very relational person. I, I thrive with, with multitude. I love to be with people. And I feel in like, am I being a good pastor? I, am I being a good husband? Am I, it was just all those. You know, always depression will always bring questions to you. Depression will never make a statement right at the beginning of the door. Depression will come and will, will bring questions to you. And you will answer the questions based on your feeling. 
And that's why right now you feel depressed. And it's not because of, of, of the world or the date or the coronavirus. It's just because the enemy has been offering you depression and been asking you a question. And I was just in my, in my chair in, in my basement. And, the, and, and I, 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 I remember a question came to my life. I say, what, what if, if you start this and, and something happened? What if this happens? What if this? What if say what? It, 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 you are not good. You're not good enough. You're not this. You're not that. You're not this. You're not that. And you, it, I got to the point that I have a thousand text message. People calling me. People doing that. And I have to turn off my phone. Turn off my computer. And and I have to say I, 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 I'm overwhelmed. What do you want me to do? And I deep in my heart I felt this. And I know if you will agree with that. But he says, speak in tongues. And I said, what? He says, speak in tongues. And I, I shut the door and everything. I said, okay, lay. If you, I, was just, I don't know if they're going to hear me. The babies are sleeping, but I'm going to shout out his name. I'm going to deep cry out in my spirit and start speaking in tongues. Shout out, and start speaking in tongues. And, from, and I felt that the, the, the speaking in tongues were bringing up the keys of the kingdom to my life. And he said, you have total access. Come on, do not, do not knock the door. Don't ask for access. You already have access to heal the sick, to cast out demons to pray for the sick. You do have access to declare protection over your life. You have access to get into the kingdom, to get total protection. Fear have no hole in my life. I, as I was speaking in tongues, I felt my body was shaking and the spirit of God was coming into my life, was coming into filling up those spaces that, that the depression wanted to take. And at the end, I was just crying out for more. I want more. I felt the Holy Spirit coming and saying, giving me, giving me, giving me boldness to, him, to face this crisis. And from now on, I'm prom I promise myself that I will not speak an encouraging word to my life. There is something, a mission we do have in through this crisis. And our mission is not just sit down. You do, are doing a great job with your family. I think we are getting things from that. But that's not just what we should be doing. Apply the keys of the kingdom. And the keys of the kingdom speak about access to the a holy place. A place that you have total access. You know, there's something I want to talk to you right now. This here. <laughs> the Bible says, said this. Can you, can you guys help me here? Come on. Come on, Olivia. Andrea, can you help me here too, please? Can you hold this here? Mm. Hallelujah. What? The I said Olivia? Oh, Sophia. <laughs> I was <laughs> making the same mistake. Olivia, if you're watching right now, I love you too. Okay. So you know what? There's something that we talk about in the Bible about the breakthrough. And this is why Jesus was telling me, you need breakthrough with the enemy, but you don't need breakthrough in the kingdom because you already have access. You don't not, you're not going to break through a door that you already have the key. You're not, you're, don't, don't break through something that you already have access. If I get to my house, imagine, and I have the keys of my house, and I, I don't care about that. I take a hammer and, hammer and start knocking the door. Leanne will kill me. Because you do have the keys to have total access to the house. Why are you keep knocking the doors? No, you do have access to heal the sick. You do have access. And get it. Get out of your depression and get into the kingdom. Get into the doors of the kingdom and tell God, it's speaking to my life. Give me the anointing to heal this. But this is what we need to do. Come on. This is what we need to do as a church right now. We need to keep praying for God to give wisdom to the doctors and the science. I mean, I'm not against that. If you want to wear your mask, wear your mask. I think you're doing a great job. If you want to wear gloves when you go, I think you need to, get, to make your... your I, I'm not saying you're just to get crazy. Go to the hospital, put your finger in somebody to have coronavirus and put it in your mouth. No. I'm getting a thousand miles per hour right here. I feel the, the heat of the Holy Spirit right now. I'm telling you this. Sometime... In this crisis, we need to break through. Then the kingdom of God needs to break through. And I'm challenging you right now as a church to not only think you're going to get out of this crisis holy and, and clean, and, and you do. 
Don't, I'm, not, I'm not taking that for granted. No, no, no. This is very important. The time at home is very important. The time with your family is very important. But I'm telling you, there is a mission we need to do. And the enemy, it is, it is putting this here. And the only thing you see is that thing over there. This is shame. This is the enemy is telling you, you will never go back to normal. You will lose your job. You will lose everything. And you know what, what's going on? The lies of the enemy, has the, they have the ability to cover you. And, and, and suddenly you're getting so far from the doors, from the kingdom, from the keys that you already have, from the access you already have, that these things are covering you. And you start coming from wisdom into fear. And there's two things right here, wisdom and fear. Wisdom is make sure you're safe, Mary, take, take whatever. I, I, when I get to my house, I wash my hands. I'm using hand sanitizers here at church. We're trying to keep the separation. And that's fine. Do it if you want to. That's, that's wisdom. Uh, fear is when you see that it, that thing, that it's your target, will, will get you no matter what. That every single thought in your life, it will be, I know for sure that this is going to cover me. That somehow in this season, I'm going to get it. I, I, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that you're not going to get it or you're going to get it. I'm telling you that whatever happens to you, we need to do something as a church. We cannot just keep praying and keep just doing that. We need to pray with a different understanding. And the understanding that we have the keys of the kingdom. And in this city, we control the atmosphere. In this city, we have access to control the atmosphere. It's time for the church. Like, what well, we're going to be doing on Tuesday morning, different pastors coming together, holding the keys of the kingdom, saying, we do have the glory of God coming over this city. And Newark, Ohio will be free of coronavirus. We'll be free of cancer. We'll be free of death. In Jesus' name, we need Need all the churches to come together as one, hold the keys of the kingdom, and say, Now, as a church, as one family, we're gonna break through in Jesus' name. Thank you, guys. We need to break through. We need to break through. Hmm. We need to break through. Don't break your windows. We don't need to break into these doors of the kingdom. You know what happened? Out here, I don't deserve it. Out here, I'm a sinner. Out here, I don't even know who I am. I'm an orphan. I don't have nothing. I'm just a lost soul. As soon as I said, Jesus, come into my heart, you know what I did? I had the door, the open door, to get into the kingdom. Inside of this door, there is protection. In this door, you have the authority to heal. In this place, you have salvation, justification. In this place, the enemy doesn't control you. He, done, he, done, he cannot control you. You control the atmosphere. I just want to share a story before we close here. When, uh, when I was in Cuba, like I said, we do have a witchcraft, uh, very strong culture of witchcraft in Cuba. And I remember one time we were, uh, I was in a, uh, in a different church. We, had, we, we do still have a lot of churches in Cuba. Where I was preaching in a different church, and I came to my city. And when I, get in, when I got into my city, I saw a big place, like a big tarp. And they were celebrating, they, were say, they, they had a, a prince from Africa that he came to, to uh, do a ceremony of witchcraft in my city. In, my, in our city in Cuba, there was a mountain that they are making sacrifices over there. And there's a, a, a lagoon that they have a snake that, have, that uh, they feed the snake. And the snake eats uh, dead animals that they were sacrificed for e idols and for witchcraft. And the prince of, of, from Africa came to, to establish a curse that was ending that year in our city. He came to establish and to make sure that that curse will pursue for 100 years. 
And that day was the 100 years from the last time that we had a prince of Africa in our city. And that day was the day that they were sacrificing animals and bringing it to the feet of this snake to keep the power and control over the city. I remember I, I was coming back to, to Hovayanos, my our city, and, and while I was going there, I said, oh, there's a tarp. I was in my old Russian motorcycle, 45, 45cc. And if you're watching right now, if you're a biker, you're probably going to laugh, but it's going to be, uh, that was my baby. I was just my, and uh, that thing was making more noise like that. I was just like, Arr! I was striving to get to the places. But I saw the tarp and, and probably 300 people there. A man white, dressed in white from Africa. And suddenly I, I just took my phone and I, say, I, I called my like 30, 40 inter intercessors and I say, right now I want everybody in the church. Pastor, I'm, not, I'm busy. I don't care if you're busy. Everybody in the church. This is time of war. This is not the time. Okay, everybody went to the church. 30, 40 intercessors. I asked someone to go ahead and go and get a camera and go to the place. And the person went there to the place and we were... Crying out for more, crying out for more, and asking God in spiritual warfare against this atmosphere theme. You know what happened? The this, this sky was blue, a blue, perfect day, sunny, a beautiful day. Suddenly, a, 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 a wind came and took the tarp and threw it away like two blocks from the place that they were, they were there. They were worshiping. You know what happened? The person called me, Pastor, something happened. The wind came and, and threw the, the tarp two, uh, two, uh, two blocks away. I said, victory, and when I was leaving, the person called me again. No, no, no. They brought the tour back, and they were, they're going to do it again. We went back and started praying against this situation. And when we prayed, another wind came and destroyed the whole tarp. And not only that, that when destroyed the whole tarp, even the chairs went. I mean, in my city, that's, that, that's, we don't have tornado, tornadoes in my, in, my, in my area. What happened, they said, okay, let's bring everybody to a government place. And they took everybody and they put it in a, in a place. And you know what happened? They took like an hour and a half to put everything together in that building. And that prince from Africa was there. And one of the, my friends, that he was part of the, of the um, green room or whatever, he was in the minivan with this prince giving him uh, food and everything. And he said to me that when this prince, w prince was opening the door of his minivan and the first he put a, a food out there, had a sky turn and, and red, and it started pouring down water. It was just raining like never before in our city. And the guy stood up, and we got the rain just came with a powerful wind, and he got to the, he he went back into his room um, um, minivan. My my friend said that we they wait like 15, 20 more minutes, and they did the same. Imagine blue sky, one foot out there. Darkness, fuego, woo, a water. The third time, the prince went out, and he, the, the guy said he heard a, thorn, a, a thunder. The prince called the authorities of the city, and he said, I'm living. It looks like the gods don't want to renew the curse. And he went back to Havana, and he couldn't do it. I'm just telling you this not to brag on our people. I'm just telling you that you have the authority to stand up and to say, my house, no. In my life, no. I'm not buying into fear. I'm, I'm, I have the doors, the gates of, king, of the kingdom. I have total access to it. I'm finishing with this. Next week, I'm going to be talking about so many good things about keys of the kingdom and things that we're going to need to break through and, and not, to get, not to take you through the storm, but for you to overcome the storm, for you to be like Jesus was sleeping through the storm and peace was coming over your life. And this season is very easy to get out of the boat without Jesus asking you to come out. You know what's the difference? That it only works if he calls you. If he calls your name. I'm telling you right now. If you're watching this video. And you don't have Jesus in your heart. And you say, Pastor, I'm, I feel like. Uh, Rachel, if you can go ahead and take a pen. I feel, Pastor, I'm right here. Fear is controlling my whole life. I already crossed the point of wisdom and fear. 
I've been abiding in fear. I don't even know if I can make it. One, today, you're right here. You're knocking. And Jesus is telling you right now, the door is not locked. It's open. The door is not locked. And you can keep trying. And you can keep trying. You can keep trying. The door is not locked. There's access for you to get into the kingdom. Why do you have to keep waiting? The door is right here. You can go through it. If you're right here and you're watching this video, you say, Pastor, I want, I want, want a different life. I'm tired to keep trying and trying. And the word trying is becoming a nightmare. You know, they were fishing for them the whole night until Jesus showed up. And Jesus said to them, do, do not wash your nets. Come on, let's go. And Peter said, Master, we've been fishing the whole night. Seven, eight hours trying and trying the same place. And Jesus said, now you're not by yourself. Go with me. And this is what he's telling you right now. You've been walking by yourself so many, for so many years, for many months. This is the time you find a partner and tell him, guide me through this life. If you're right now, I bet you've been fishing the whole night. Even you're tired watching the nets. You said, I want more, Papa. I invite you to close your eyes. And just tell Jesus that you don't want to walk alone. You were not made to walk this life by yourself. You were made to walk this life with him. If you're making this decision, close your eyes, please. And tell him, Jesus, I'm at the door. Open the door for me. I accept you as my only Lord and Savior. I decide to follow you today. Forgive my sin. In Jesus' name, amen. If you made this uh, prayer, I want you to right now, right now, find a way to text us or call the church or email us. We're going to have the information right after we finish this this uh this time and please do not turn off your tv do not go to uh, have lunch or nothing without texting calling or emailing us we want to be able to call you we want to be able to reach out to you and tell you how much we love you the separation between you and i it's just nothing our hearts are linked and i love you i want you to right now please take this phone number take this email text or call the church we would love to kiss you hug you in the spirit until we can get to come back and do it in person i love you remember this will pass in a couple of days couple of months couple of weeks you will love and you this coronavirus and this circumstances will just be a memory in your mind but the decision you make today will last forever god bless you one more thing before we close remember this the best is still yet to come.